Before I speak, uh, I want to uh, welcome to everybody, uh, men and women, come today and see my uh, opening to my spirit house. So I'm very happy to see you all of them come here and and uh, see my opening uh, for my spirit house. So before I speak, I want to uh, talk thank you to uh, Museum Gallery. Uh, they take me here and I put my spirit house here and I'm very heavy. When I stay at home, I cannot see Australia because uh, this is my uh, local knowledge and I come to Australia to uh, Brisbane Museum Gallery. I'm very happy to stay with you all year and I'm very happy. Let me change I'm talking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Waikawa just wants to welcome you all and tell you that what you're looking at is local knowledge, his local knowledge. You may have some questions, uh, which I think I've talked to the men before, uh, which about the nature of the spirit house. Um, the, if I understand it, and Ruth is the curator, one of the curators, along with M Martin Fowler, who commissioned this work. So this is a commissioned work. Um, it's based on a traditional spirit house in which initiations of men into a very, very elaborate spirit cult take place in uh, various villages is in the Abalam speaking area. Abalam is a language. Uh, the village uh, that these men come from is called Apangai, which actually means place of bones, bone place. Um, the museum really wanted to display the facades of, for uh, the, the, the APT. Um, so obviously you're looking at the front facade of a spirit house. These are very famous structures in world terms architecturally. They are basically A-frames. Uh, A-framed houses with a major central ridge pole. Uh, and the interesting thing about Abalam spirit houses is that the front is cantilevered forward, usually uh, to some extent, so that the front, uh, the top of the facade is is further forward often than the than the bottom. Um, uh, so uh, it's only uh, once a spirit house is built, and they're built every so often, they don't last a very long time because of insect depredation, etc. Um, the people, women and men, have a very elaborate opening ceremony for the spirit house, which is called a korumbo in Abalam language and drums are suspended inside the interior of the spirit house and there's, pre uh, there's dances which take place for at least two weeks. I know, I lived through one and the, the drums go all night long. Um, and it's a time of great ceremony, celebration. Then women leave the spirit house and they never go inside again. From that point on in the life cycle of the spirit house, only men go inside in a series of graded initiations which involve the painting, uh, painting and sculptures through a series of initiations through the life cycle of the men. Um, and so, but this towers over a plaza and the plaza is uh, uh, the center of a kind of hamlet, hamlet. The plaza is called the Ame. The Ame and dances such as the one you just saw take place on the Ame and people decorate themselves very beautifully. So this, for example, uh, this uh, object 
uh, artifact which Kano is wearing actually represents and is a pig because you see it has the tusks of the boar. And this, the idea is that this, the tusk, by wearing this, the man will be infused with the power and to some extent the aggression of the boar. Um, uh, the men often wear materials, plant materials, which gives them, uh, they haven't uh, uh, brought them with them since they're very fragile materials, which protect them from various illnesses um, during dances, etc. Um, now, I'd like to just open the floor up uh, for questions. I think, uh, me ask them all if they have qu questions yeah. along you plan, by me change and talk, yeah. The Avalon have big men, but most of the senior men are equal to each other. So there is no senior one single man. And this does not represent stages of the life cycle, no. It represents ancestral spirits. And the spirits are called Ngual. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, name of the spirit uh, I call Gual. Gualdu. Gualdu. Yeah. In my language, I call Gualdu. Gualdu. Myra. It's a, Myra means essentially all of the things related to the spirit house. Ngwalandu means both grandfather, grandchild, but it also means all the ancestral men and women. So you're connecting to the uh, spirits who have gone, the spirits of your ancestors, and they're called Ngwalandu. That's what it represents. So, um, how many? Uh, it, how how much Korombo is stop long up and guy? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got uh, yeah. three three Korombo in my village in Apangai. Right. So there are three, three in total. Some of them already all in follow. Some of them are uh, getting old, so they're, uh, they don't like, so. No. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Clan. You like to, why not, why could I talk, uh, tell the name of the clan. Uh, Family. Yeah. Uh, the name of the clan, uh, we have come here. So, mine is uh, Yayui, mine is Yayui, and uh, Po Kano, Loktai, uh, is over there, belongs to Kano, is uh, Tepmangro, Tepmangro. Okay, uh, belongs to Nyigit, is, uh, is Ngual, is uh, Daromo. So, uh, just uh, let me change it to uh, a long A Korombo is created not uh, by uh, a group of sponsors. They would be called Numandu, big men. And these three men would be the sponsors. So they don't come from the same clan. Clans are very, very small in Avalon area, very tiny. And so there would be, say, 30 clans in one village of 550 people. So the three sponsors, uh, the three clans are represented uh, uh, in, in the Korombo. Uh, these are generally created Korombo spirit houses by a group of um, clan hamlets. So clans are localized, they live in one or two hamlets. They're a group of um, uh, related men, uh, say brothers, and they're married in wives, and their children and their grandchildren, and they all live in a clan hamlet area, um, uh, which forms a kind of ceremonial group. And so you're looking at the Korombo of a ceremonial group. Uh, from Apangai, the village called Apangai.
Why qua? Why qua? Emmy like save long uh, meaning belong all bilum. He stop. You put him M now. Hey, come. Come. Come to uh, the string back, I hang it uh, on the board, board side. Uh, those one. This one is a diamond shape. This one is the diamond shape. And uh, this one is the uh, triangle shape. The women uh, do it. So, yeah. Um, their billums from their wives uh, often decorate the spirit house. I should say so. Uh, Kano is saying that uh, Waikawa's Waikawa's wives is on the very top, and uh, Nikit is up. Um, oh, on this side. Sorry, and Kano, Kano is up no, where? I mean that. Bilum means um, we follow this one here. Penal there. Uh huh. Oh, I understand. Okay. Really, the billum, the, the the name for the string of a billum is is wood, but it's also a design, and they feel that a spirit, a person, yeah. uh, a dancer, a, is are not complete without a net bag which is in Pidgin English called a, bu a billum and in their language is called wood. Um, so it's kind of like your completion, your decoration, I I without which a billum is an incredibly important item. I should also say it's important that you all know because maybe you think women don't get much of a look in here, which is probably true, um, but that women are the producers of all the net bags. And they're very significant. They were the major item of clothing, or whatever you call that you put on your body um, in traditional times. Um, and your, many of your most prized personal possessions are in your billum, and people love to look through the holes of the billum, are very important, and people sort of feel the billum. Thanks, Ruth. Like Ruth's beautiful billum. Yeah, no. Would you hold it, Kana? You hold, hold them along me, yeah. So you, you feel somebody's billum, you know, and you say, oh, I want some beetle knot, or you try and figure out what's in it, and you try and look through. So it's a very important and significant item. And um, so it is a, an essential decoration. I should say also that when the only time billums are actually put onto um, no, good plan, um, onto a spirit house is when an initiation actually takes place. Um, and once the initiation is over, the billums are removed. So um, also the beautiful balls, our, the balls of, of this are made of styrofoam, <laughs> but this is actually in the village, it's a plant which comes from a vine in the forest, and magnificently the plant produces a fruit which is orange and, and yellow. And this is also a decoration. During an initiation, just for the overnight period when the initiation is taking place, the whole front facade is decorated in this way, perhaps with not so many billums, but um, some. And uh, this, in a sense, is a representation of the feminine holding of uh, life, the way in which life is, is held and it's also an essential decoration, but they're removed. So in everyday life, um, however, there is a design on the front, which Kano was talking about, the wood design, which is the kind of diamond-shaped design, which is all around the faces. I hope you all see this. There's a series of, of, 
Yes. And so they they paint the design of the bilum onto the ingual. So the ingual, the ancestors, always are also carrying a net bag. They're also always carrying the bilum. Name belong to you? Name belong to you? I'm Yami. Uh, red, uh, pick, pick. red sheet. Red plus sheet. Um, red sheet. Uh, this three uh, sheet is red, and they get it, and they make a string back. So it's a plant, and uh, you make the string bag from the plant. And there are various dyes that are traditionally used. Of course, now. Um, very ingenious uh, materials are used for the dyes. Like um, when I was there, which was a long time ago, uh, doing my the major research that I did, people would use carbon paper. That's why it has the these pinkish colors, and they would, you know, run the strings of the net bag through the carbon paper to get colors, a sort of purplish, uh, pinky color. Emmy, Emmy asked bone, yeah. No, God. No, no, there are no bones in the structure, no bones of their ancestors. Uh, there is, um, uh, how could I put it, magical material at, in the top. And often the ridge pole has the face of um, an ancestor carved, you know, so that the end of the major ridge pole represents also an ingual, an ingual and do. I don't know, uh, I don't know about this one. I can't see the edge of the ridge pole. It's usually hidden inside anyway, so you don't see it. Well, this Emmy, all the same, this is the same height as your Corumbo, yes? Uh. Yes, same as mine. Uh, in my village. Exactly the same. Same. Uh, yeah. What? Same. Same as mine uh, at home. So we come and I come and put it here. Same. This is about the same height, more or less, as the Korumbo in Waikoua's uh, area. Uh, they do vary in size. And they also, the Avalon are a group of about 40 to 50,000 speakers, which is a very large language group for the East Sepik. The Sepik River area of New Guinea is one of the most uh, linguistically complex in the world. Um, estimates are that there are 298 languages, different languages, not dialects in the quadrant formed by the Sepik River and the, say, border uh, with uh, uh, West Papua uh, now. That's probably the densest kind of linguistic diversity in the world. So some languages have only a few hundred speakers. The Abalam language, uh, which is related to the Kwama language, which is the uh, name of the linguistic group of the men who created the work around the corner, are related languages. Um, so this is a very large language group, but there are variations within the language group. There are dialect variations. And along with the dialect variations, there are also variations in the height and the style of carvings and paintings. So for example, in the, where these men worked, which is the kind of northeast of the area, um, the houses reached their highest. In the south, which is going toward the river, where uh, forests don't really exist, it's, it's grasslands. Uh, the houses are much smaller, which so some of the stylistic variation has to do with the materials that are available in the ecological niche that the people live in. These people live in areas adjacent to fairly large 
treed forests, so they can get these quite large materials. But the Wosara built smaller, but also equally interesting houses. And the house styles vary through the whole of the Sepik region. There are there are what you might call variations on a theme. As you can see, the Cuoma is a related group, but uh, somewhat different. They, for example, don't have a facade. What you see mounted on the wall uh, around the corner is actually the inside roof. And you just walk in and the sides are open. And you look up and you see the painted ceiling. So their facade, they do a facade. The Cuomo don't do a facade. They do an interior roof painting. Uh, me, Chenchim, talk. Oli Laksave Long Ticket. Ticket, who said, M. Ingualandu or Kutagua, Baba Tagua? Ticket, ticket, Tassel. Yeah. Um, so I can show you and uh, uh, explain you. So this one is a mass. Eight for mass. Duk duk. Okay. Uh, this one is the air of the man spirit. Okay. Uh, this one is a head for the uh, peak, bala. In my language, I call bala. Oh, oh, this one, it's also the same as this one. So, so uh, just let me turn and talk, click, click. Uh, so there, the ticket, which is the lintel that goes horizontally across, represents a variety of figures uh, that exist in the Avalon universe. Um, the first one he was telling you is a Baba. A Baba is a um, helmet m mask which goes all over the entire head and has a grass skirt. The Baba is the first figure that comes out during a spirit um, initiation. And they always carry during initiation spears. Um, they're, they're, the pu they're a kind of public face, and they're across, I think, personally speaking now, the Avalon won't say this, but something between a clown-like figure and a policeman. And they run around sort of taking their spears and sort of keeping people in lines, you might say. Um, the next figure he's saying is an ancestral figure, an ingual. The third one is a pig. You can see the beginnings of the, the, the tusks. They've cut them, but they're the beginnings of the tusks. And so the lintel and on the facade also sometimes carries other figures. There's an, a yam hero, for example, in the uh, yams are the staple of the Avalon diet. Uh, they're of incredible importance, which I can't go into here. They're thought to be inhabited by the spirits of the clans. So you obviously inherit from your, um, your, your male senior relatives the plants which you will carry on. So therefore, the yams are actually thought to have certain kinds of properties that we would associate with persons, like yams can smell, but they can't see, so they don't have eyes, you know. And um, so yams have ancestral spirits as well. Um, and so there are also witches. The Avalon believe that certain female figures who are called Kutagwa exist. Sometimes they'll paint them on the front. Wapikan is the ancestral hero who is thought to have initiated the uh, yam technology, uh, which the Avalon are very, very good at. There are over 100 varieties of yams grown in the Avalon area. And, um, and here, wait, come, come, come back, little mama. 
<laughs> and um, we have a scene stealer here. Nothing like a little child to uh, steal the audience's heart. <laughs> and um, so uh, there are different figures as well. I should also say that the totems, the, uh, the, the, the figures who are thought to have uh, from which clans come are birds, birds. And so you see a hornbill at the um, far left-hand side. Yes, on, on both sides are the hornbill. This hornbill is a very important figure. But every clan has a particular bird totem. They also have a particular plant totem. And um, the plants aren't usually represented directly. But so what you, I suppose, are looking at is a cluster of persons and objects which are found in the Abalam universe, all of whose uh, powers and abilities and characteristics are kind of come to um, live on the and in the Korumbo at certain periods of time.